Hello and welcome to Sardis Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are joining us to worship God today. We would love to know that you are here, so please either comment on this post or fill out the Connect card. And please let us know how we can pray for you. We are praying for you all the time, but we'd love to pray for your specific requests, and you can include those on that Connect card. Our clothing drive for crisis assistance ministries is continuing through the end of this month. You can drop off your donations here at the church on Wednesday afternoons or Sundays before or after outdoor worship, so please consider donating. Join us on Zoom on Tuesday nights for the next four weeks as Meredith Hammonds and I lead a study of the fascinating and multi-award winning novel, The Vanishing Half. It's going to be a great time for discussion. You can email me for more information and to register for that study. And now, as we continue to worship, let us watch a video moment for mission from our friends in Haiti. Sardis friends, I'm Brenda McKay. Many thanks to all of you who currently support students at the ICB school in Bayonne, Haiti. Your gift of sponsorship is vital to the school being able to operate and provide an education to more than 2,000 students. Student sponsorship directly connects you with a student through emails or letters that are interpreted by an on-site employee of World of God. Please prayerfully consider student sponsorship. The cost is $40 a month. The benefit is priceless. See what love God has given us. See what God has given us. That we should be called children of God. We should called children of God. You alone, O oh God, make us dwell in safety. Make us dwell in safety. Let the light of your face shine upon us. Let your face shine above us.
The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Trusting in the Spirit, let us confess our sin before God. Wondrous God, you sent Jesus Christ into this world that we would know your love and share your life. Yet we resist you and fail to walk in your ways. Your good news becomes stale to us. We lose our awe at your power over sin and death. We allow the cares of this world to rob us of our Easter joy. Cleanse our hearts, O God. Remind us that we belong to you. Nurture us in the life abundant, that we would grow into the full stature of our calling as your children. Give us zeal in our living and keep us pure, that our witness may be true and vibrant in service to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. and I'm the director of music, but I also work with the children's choir here, and I'm so excited to be with you right now. In today's scripture, you're gonna hear about how Jesus came and surprised the disciples. Maybe it's like the surprise right now without it being Sarah, Diane, and me. But he didn't knock on the door and whisper or wait for the, the, the disciples to come open it. He didn't whisper hello. He just showed up and appeared and said, peace be with you. Can you imagine it? You're sitting right now at home watching church and you know who's in the room with you, but then all of a sudden someone who you recognize and you know just appears out of nowhere. They're not supposed to be there and they start talking to you. You'd have questions. I'd have questions. What are you doing here right now? Aren't you supposed to be somewhere else? And the disciples had those same questions questions. And Jesus helped them understand. He went through, he spoke scripture, and he helped them understand why he was there. And when Jesus greeted them with peace be with you, he wasn't just saying, hi, I'm here. He was reminding them of the actual peace he brings. Think of like a hurricane, right? All around, there's the super strong winds and scary storms happening. But in the center is the eye. And it's calm, still, and peaceful, even though the storm is raging around it. There's times that we may feel nervous, scared, the complete opposite of peaceful. But if we take a breath, we can remember that our faith in Jesus is our center our eye that can help us guide us through. And at the end of the scripture, Jesus gave the disciples an important task that day, to spread the love of God to all around them. And we have that special task too. We know from reading the Bible, learning from our Sunday school shepherds, our families, our pastors, of the truth of Jesus and the power of what he did for us. It's too much to try to keep inside and we can share it every day. 
And that might mean sharing a kind word or a note with others, forgiving others quickly or asking for forgiveness, or showing that we care by our actions and how we treat others. There's so many other ways that I know you can come up with. And it's like your faith on the go each week that you talk about in Sunday school. So this week, look for an extra way to share God's love with those in need. However we do it, we know that Jesus is with us, the center of our life, bringing us peace. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for continuing to teach us when we don't understand. Thank you for our shepherds and teachers in our life that draw us closer to you. Help us to share your love, peace, and good news each day to others. Amen. Friends, your generosity to Sardis allows things to happen on this campus and in the community around us. You are making an impact through past drives such as a book of my own, providing books to young readers at Rama Road Elementary School, which collected $10,070, as well as the one great hour of sharing that helps our neighbors in need around the world, which collected $4,740 this year. Thank you for sharing God's love and spreading blessings in this way by contributing to Christ's work through Sardis Presbyterian. Let us go to God with our tithes and offerings. Oh, 
Let's pray. Lord, we gather together in worship from places far from one another. By your word, draw us closer to you and to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading from Luke may need to be set up by what comes before it. Jesus had died on the cross on Friday. Now it was early Sunday, and some of the women who followed Jesus went to the tomb. They found nobody in there, and no body in there. Jesus was gone. They were suddenly greeted by two angels who told them that Jesus was raised from the dead as he had told them he would be. The women went and told the 11 apostles and the other disciples, which might have been up to 120 people by now. The report of the women was taken by the 11 apostles as nonsense, and they did not believe. Peter, however, ran to the tomb to check it out, found it empty, and then returned wondering what had happened. That same day, two disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus, seven miles away. They were talking about the things that had happened that terrible weekend while a stranger joined them. It was Jesus, but they were prevented somehow from recognizing him. He asked what they were talking about, and the one named Cleopas was stunned this stranger hadn't heard about the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth and expressed his deep disappointment because they had thought he was the Messiah, the Christ. He then added that some of the women claimed to have been told by angels that Jesus was alive. Peter had checked it out. But he didn't see Jesus, so when the travelers got to Emmaus, they sat down to eat together. And after Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to them, they suddenly realized who he was. Just as suddenly, Jesus disappeared from their sight. Cleopas and his friend hustled back to Jerusalem to the eleven and the others and told them what had happened. Our reading picks up there. Listen for the word of God. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. And Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. There's so many themes in this story shared with the one that we heard last week from John about Jesus appearing to his disciples when Thomas doubted. Terrified and afraid disciples gathered together, doubting someone's witness credibility and the need 
for physical proof. Jesus suddenly appearing among them and presenting that proof. The importance of forgiveness and their call to witness. Definitely a different story, but with all the same stuff in it. But I want to look at this whole passage in light of the first words Jesus spoke in it, which are also the first words he spoke in the Thomas story. Peace be with you. Let's look at the word peace first. The Greek word Luke wrote is irene. If you know someone named Irene, her name means peace. We may think of peace as the opposite of war or as some state of serenity, and that's on track. But in the Bible, it goes beyond that. Whether it's Irene or the Aramaic shalom Jesus would have used, This notion of peace includes the absence of whatever turbulences life might bring or whatever things might make us terrified and afraid. But it's also a blessing of good health, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, and even financial, as it points to a life of whole prosperity, including healthy relationships. Peace is the state of all the scattered, complex parts of life becoming whole or complete, working together in unity. And Jesus wants that kind of peace for us. In John's gospel, Jesus said to his disciples not long before his crucifixion, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I give you not as the world gives. Jesus wants for us that wholeness that the world cannot provide. Jesus wants there to be peace in your life. Not the kind of peace the world talks about, but the kind of peace he talks about. He said to his disciples, peace be with you. So, disciple of Jesus Christ, what peace do you need in your life? Are there things that feel out of place? Do you feel out of place? Are there places you want to be but can't go? Or do you find yourself in a place that does not have in it the people you want to be there? As we speak, maybe soon, stay tuned. Jesus wants whatever is broken in your life to be mended. He wants scattered directions lined up for us. And he mentions two things to his disciples that can work for peace in their lives and in ours. One is repentance, changing our hearts and lives. The other is forgiveness. These are things that we don't have to wait for. These are things that we can participate in now. When we ask Christ for forgiveness, we are forgiven by him and we have peace with Jesus Christ. When we ask Christ for forgiveness and hear that we are forgiven by him, that's when we know we have peace with him. That relationship is restored, the brokenness made whole by his sacrifice on the cross and his love for us. But there is that other part, changing our hearts and lives to line up with his will and his definition of peace. Repentance means changing our hearts and lives in a way that gives up or turns away from those scattered or broken directions of our own choosing and focuses our whole physical, emotional, spiritual, social, and even financial selves so that our whole life works in unity for Christ. That does not mean that everything wrong in our earthly life will be suddenly fixed. But that peace may mean that even in this imperfect and broken world, we will not have to be terrified and afraid because we have peace with the risen Christ. 
But it's not just about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. The grammatically correct translation of the line in question is, peace be with y'all. Jesus was talking about the group of them, maybe all 120. And for them to have his kind of peace, that was going to require them being at peace with each other. What does it mean when we say, peace be with you? It is not just wishing or praying for someone else to experience peace. That's a fine start. But it's more literally saying, peace to you, from me, to you. It will be recognizing that what they need to have peace in their life might be very different than what I need to have peace in mine. And that I am willing to work for it with them. This is no, how you doing? Peace be with you expresses a desire for a healthy and whole relationship with the person to whom you are saying it. Just like our relationship with Jesus, that may mean changing our hearts and lives somehow to understand what they need and to take difficult, selfless, sacrificial steps to bring them wholeness in whatever aspect of their lives needs healing. And in any relationship involving one or more human beings, we can go ahead and expect forgiveness to be a crucial component of it. There is no peace without it. Last week, we talked about being a credible witness. See it and say it, but do it so that people will believe you. That shows faith to be real. Jesus had to show these disciples that he was real. He was there in the flesh, but they actually thought that the more likely possibility was that he was a ghost. Jewish legend was that ghost bodies couldn't eat food, so he asked for that piece of fish to prove he was really there with them. He was not ghosting them. We, in turn, prove that we are really there with someone when we take concrete action for them. The offer of peace to someone else is real when we make ourselves real to them. So this means that when Jesus says, peace be with y'all, The first appropriate response is to say back to Jesus and also with you. But peace does not happen until we then turn to our neighbor and say, peace be with you. And then go find the next neighbor and say it again and keep going and making peace until our lives run out of space and time. Jesus said, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life, repentance, for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. See it, say it, do it. Why beginning from Jerusalem? Because that's where they were. It was time to get started. But the call was to reach all nations. The Greek word is really all ethnicities, which made more sense as nations back then. We begin where we are, and then we just keep going. We begin with our family or church family, but Jesus does not want us to stop working for peace in the lives of others there, but to go as far as we can reach. Back in 2018, we decided for various reasons to combine our two worship services into one for the summer. One reason was to get everybody together. Everybody likes that. The hard part in that is always figuring out how to blend the two worship styles. People don't like that as much. In working on that, we found ourselves struggling with what to do 
with the passing of the peace that usually came after the prayer of confession at the traditional service. And that's a good place for it. We recognize the forgiveness that restores our relationship with God, and then we pass the peace of Christ to work on our relationships with each other. But we weren't going to have a normal prayer of confession every week, and we wanted to keep the passing of the peace because the building and maintaining of relationships within the congregation was one of the reasons we were making this temporary change. We finally decided... We'd try it at the end of the service. And the first Sunday, we knew that was it. Nobody rushed off to the parking lot so that they could beat the Methodists to Red Rocks Cafe. People stayed and talked, and there were real conversations beyond how you doing. When it was in the middle of the service, it was always a little awkward when the passing of the peace was going really well and I had to tell everybody to sit down and hush so that we could get to the next liturgical element. The peace was the point. I don't know if we'll always have it at the end, but I do know that Jesus does not want that to be the end of it. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you is meant to be a powerful reverberation beginning with Christ and changing us and moving us to take that whole life-changing peace to the world where hearts and lives and lots of other things need to change because the world does not know what peace really is. So we carry it out with us to share. Peace is not the status quo. In this broken and sinful world, peace can never be the way things are. Not until the kingdom comes in full. There were too many news articles the last two weeks for me to pick just one to make the point which I guess makes the point. And some of the worst news that I heard, though, came out of Haiti from our friend Reverend Actionel Florisma in Bayonne. Unbelievable crushing inflation, hunger, poverty, murder, kidnappings for ransom happening so regularly that he says it feels like everyone's just waiting for their turn. Hidden in the mountains, I understand the violence hasn't reached by an A, but the other hard things are there. You can help send the peace of Christ to them through the EWO Scholarship Program. Zoom in at 1 o'clock this afternoon and learn more. Maybe we can help educate the next generation of leaders who can finally bring some peace to that nation. While we recognize all of the peacemaking work that we've got to do in our own. Peace is when there is no longer anything between you and God or you and me or you and your neighbor or even you and one you might identify as an enemy that keeps us from working together for one another's physical, emotional, spiritual, social, and financial whole health. It begins standing in front of Jesus Christ right where we are and hearing him offer his peace to us and then proclaiming the need for changing our hearts and lives for the forgiveness of sins and displaying that as real people with others so that we can show up among people who are afraid, have doubts, distrust or disagreements, have lost hope, and give peace to them, no matter who they are or where they are. Peace be with you until it's also with all the nations of the earth. To the glory of God, amen.
Let us now proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of all creation, we give you thanks and praise today for the beauty of this earth, for the flowers that are blooming, for all the newness of life we see in the budding trees, for the joy of worshiping you. And we give you thanks for the newness of this day. As we gather today, we pray for the life of our church that our generous witness may broaden your table as a place to live and grow in love. May all who worship with us feel your love, and may we be emboldened by our worship to share your love with the world. Prince of Peace, when you appeared to the disciples, they were terrified and afraid, and doubts arose in their hearts. And yet you gave them the gift of your deep and abiding peace. There is so much in the world today that terrifies us, O oh God, from the mental health crisis in our families and in our community, from the rising homicide rates in our city, and the mass shootings and violence in our country. We are afraid. We are saddened. We are angry. And God, we are so in desperate need of your deep and abiding peace. But we know that peace does not come easily. So challenge us. Change our hearts and lives so we may experience and embody your peace for others. So just as Jesus showed his wounded hands and feet to those terrified apostles, reveal to us, your church, and to people of prayer of every faith, the wounds of our neighbors, the fears of individuals and families, and the avenues toward healing, that we may be your hands and feet in this hurting world. Healing Spirit, there are so many we know and love who are grieving in pain and experiencing deep exhaustion. May your healing hand be upon them and upon us. We pray especially for those who are mourning the loss of someone they love. May your presence give them comfort and peace. O oh God, you hear the cries of those who are sick and in pain. And so we pray for all who are suffering. And in this time of silence, we name the suffering we see and experience in our own lives and in the lives of others. O oh God of promise, Hear our cries and the prayers of our hearts, and give to us and all of your children your grace, your love, and your peace. Trusting in your abundant mercy, we bring all of our prayers, trusting that through the work of the Spirit you will indeed answer. We pray all of these things boldly, for we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who conquered death rose again and will indeed conquer this. We pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God furnish you with heavenly power to pass the peace of Jesus Christ. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And may the real peace of Jesus Christ be with others because of you. Amen.